Hello Brazil, my name is Santiago Felipe, Brooklyn-based visual artist and Bjork tour photographer. I want to thank the CCBB for having me be part of this amazing project. Pretty much they've asked for a little insight um, on my career and how did I end up being Bjork's tour photographer. And to pinpoint it, it was pretty much, pretty much my first concert in 1997. And it really was a friend who told me, oh, it's, it's a cool thing to do to sneak your camera into concerts and take pictures. And I did it and, you know, I, it was like my thing to do. Any concert I went to as a kid, I snuck in my little point and shoot camera. So it was a hobby for a long time. And I actually went to school for audio engineering. I got my bachelor's in entertainment business. So I was really interested in the business side of the music industry and was curious about doing a and um, I moved to New York and things were hard. <laughs> things were real hard. And I, I feel though when I moved to New York, the music industry was changing. So, you know, just to hang in there, I did retail, freelance, odd jobs, and just, you know, and on and about. Uh, one time I was on and about in Brooklyn and ended up at a bar and I was just networking, talking to the bartender, and he was telling me that a friend of his um, managed managed a lounge in the city, and they were looking for a photographer to shoot these drag burlesque shows. And I said yes, and they couldn't pay me. They could only pay me with food because they had like a like a a little restaurant. And it's just those things that you just have to do to survive or you know get started, but. Uh, it was at that lounge where I could say, you know, I met all these performers and drag queens and I think that's where the nightlife stuff took off. And it was one of those things, oh, well, one, I loved doing it, but it was, you know, it was a job. It was, my, it was, you know, I had, to, you got to pay rent. <laughs> and, but, you know, that led to many uh, exciting opportunities. And one of those, I ended up working in an event for Pat Fields. I was her, her house photographer. At her store she had a store in the east village pat field is known as the stylist for that show sex in the city and she had a rupaul's drag race season four premiere at her store and it was pretty cool it was the, all the queens and rupaul was there and so was james murray <laughs> i think i had crossed paths with james uh before but uh i would pinpoint you know like the the fondest memory I have is James at that event and chatting with him. And that's, I believe that's where we connected. We really connected. You know, uh, we, we stayed in touch. And I actually, that's, at, or after that, after, the, after that point, that's where all the drag race uh, stuff kind of manifested. And especially as there was newer seasons, newer seasons and newer queens. And I did that for a while and I and on top of nightlife and just anything you could do to work in New York um, it really was until the Vonicuro residency in New York that I reconnected with James and so I, I shot one of the shows I got invited back to shoot a second show of the residency and then that summer I did Governor's Ball and then Bjork Digital and next thing you know, I was touring the world. All right, guys, let's do some nightlife uh, stills. First one, uh, it's it's just a really ridiculous photo that I love. And uh, to me, I feel if you if I were to describe the Brooklyn drag scene in one photo, it would be this photo. It's just uh, I feel it kind of just translates like just having fun and just being over the top and ridiculous and, and having a good time. And uh, a lot of these kids, uh, over over the couple of years, are, have become good friends. Here is a portrait of Horchata, who is the founder of the Brooklyn, uh, excuse me, Bushwick. It's a huge festival here in, in Brooklyn. And she's taken it to Berlin. She's done Mexico. Um, I forgot where else she was recently. But, yeah, she's not shy. <laughs> and taking, and packing an, an an, an, a flight full of... Uh, Brooklyn drag queens. It's kind of fun and wild. And next up is a uh, good friend, Mary Cherry. And one thing about, I believe, 
of just having these queens as friends, uh, I think over time, they've um, they've helped build my craft in the sense of just learning how to give direction and learning how to get what you need and um, and just communicating with another artist. I feel. Next up, I just uh, Suzanne Barch, and <laughs> I feel if you're an inspiring drag queen or club kid baby, you will at some point end up working for her here in New York. And I want to show this photo just um, again when I have fun shooting nightlife. I always love capturing uh, the looks and the details that goes into that in, into them. And if you notice in this photo, the eyelashes are actually she they're hers they're like her brand and i believe she's giving them to hungry to put on bjork during tour and here she is just in the moment with amanda lapore um in the moment and so she has a party on top of the standard usually during the summers it's called on top because you're on top of the standard hotel <laughs> and it has like this little jacuzzi and it's always kind of funny it, 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 at the you know when the night starts it's just you know a queen or two in there on a little inflatable pool thing and throughout the night it just kind of escalates and just everyone's like diving in there and anything goes that water must be filthy uh but yeah i sh i didn't use flash to kind of hide uh identity you just gotta respect I, I feel it's one thing that's really important in nightlife um, people go out to have fun and let loose and although it, it is kind of cool to get candid moments I think you should always respect the privacy of uh, the individuals you know and the next couple of photos are just some of the guests that uh, host and go to Suzanne's parties and what's again it's usually never a dull moment and I think throughout the night it just gets more wilder and uh, you just gotta sort of what I do I kind of hang out in a corner and I people watch that's what I call it I just watch and because you, you don't want to be in someone's face uh, with a camera you know so I always kind of like watch and see when it's a good time to approach them again I, I feel people go to parties to have a good time not to constantly you know well they shouldn't be on their phone but <laughs> But, you know, uh, people go out to have a good time and let loose, you know, and leave the baggage at home. So the last thing they want is, you know, someone with a camera in their face, I feel. But um, it's a weird thing. Cause, example, the next photo is of Ryan Burke, uh, amazing makeup artist. And this kid always brings the look. And um, there, I, I guess there are, you know, different occasions where the kids, because these kids do spend hours putting on these looks. And they do, you know, I was saying earlier, some of these kids do live for the camera. So, it, but I always feel it's good to get them like early on in the party when it's, when their makeup is fresh and not like falling off in the sweat. And, uh, but yeah, it, but then going piggyback and saying, and what I was saying earlier, uh, the kids just want to have their time with their friends and you just gotta know when it's a good time to step in and ask for a photo. Next up is Linux. Uh, I thought it was just fun. I just th that was like a a statue of a tiger, <laughs> and I just rolled it out into the center of the stage, and I asked Linux to just hop on it, and it was pretty cool. As soon as I asked her to get on it, you see the kids in the background just take you know documenting photos of me taking photos of her, and uh, and again just again working with drag queens. I feel like and and nightlife. You sort of. Um, it's sort of like a training for learning how to give instructions and uh, for me again personally I can express this, this a lot is uh, me being shy working nightlife sort of helped you know open up and and just to approach strangers and ask them for photos <laughs> I was terribly shy uh, the next couple of photos are atmosphere shots and I think some of these venues, you go through them and you see the lighting and the lasers and the silhouettes of the guests. Uh, I feel just from years of shooting these kind of things, 
in a, in a weird way, uh, helped be quick when I see something on stage with the lighting rigs they have set up or with whatever, whatever it's on stage that involves uh, some fun lighting. I think shooting parties and um, again, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like you're training but not knowing that you're training for this job, I feel. And we got some more. So I, I want to go do a couple more portraits, show you a couple more portraits. And this one is of Crystal something something. Uh, it's from a couple years back. And um, I know the place was a bar. I think it was sort of like a themed sort of bar called Junk or something like that. And uh, I was doing these editorials for a boy magazine, a gay magazine. And, uh, yeah, I was looking for somewhere cool to shoot Crystal, and we just <laughs> asked. We popped in, and we asked if we could take a photo with, I don't know, with the junk in there. And, yeah, it was like a couple minutes, and we that, and there you go. That's what you get. And uh, I guess what I want to uh, point out from these, por this portrait and the one that follows, it's sort of uh, working with the time you got. Because, obviously, if we would have been there hours, like, they would have tried to charge us. You know, we're broke artists in Brooklyn. And I feel being quick with my time had uh, really helped. You know, I would do these portraits with Bjork before a show. And you just got to be ready for whenever she is ready. And uh, you just, you know, you better you better hope you get that photo. Because that's all you're getting. Uh, but anyways, next up is actually an old school photo of Acid Betty. Who later ended up being a contestant on Drag Race. And this photo of Betty followed with a photo of a good friend, performer. She goes by Mocha Light. And her partner, also a drag performer, Misty Meaner. If you notice, it's all against uh, the same graffiti wall. And this graffiti wall is at the bar where... I happened to stumble upon and uh, chat with the bartender who offered, <laughs> who then suggested his friend had a job at this bar in the city who needed a photographer to shoot drag burlesque shows. And uh, this bar, the one where I took these photos that you see right now, ended up being this regular spot that I would go end up going to for years and just parting my face off <laughs> and photographing all these performers and uh yeah the that graffiti wall ended up being the backdrop for many 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 portraits you know i hope to so someday release a book uh from all, everything i shot at that uh bar uh it was open for a couple of years unfortunately you know it's now a condo Next photo is a really good, f wacky friend of mine's, uh, Thor G. Thor, and <laughs> who I met at that burlesque drag bar in the city, who later ended up having her own show with some of the queens I just showed you at that gay bar with the graffiti wall. <laughs> and, you know, me and Thor G go way back, and I remember at, you know, that bar, the 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 gay bar with the graffiti wall you know she had a a wednesday show and i kid you not it would be like five of us <laughs> and you know i would take pictures of them and i kid you not at the end of the night you know they you know they got paid in tips and they would split the tips with me and like you know we would all go home with five bucks and but you know i was there because we were all friends and we just loved what we did and we had you know we, we were we were messes but we had a really good time and um but what's really great, what, what I really love that I got out of out of all of this is the friendship with some of the girls. And I think uh, the friendship and just the silly moments. And I think the next photo is a really ridiculous moment. And uh, again, just in being improv and, in the mo and, in, and just in that moment, <laughs> I saw like Mariah Carey moments. Uh, this photo, you know, there was a blizzard. Uh, here in Brooklyn, and they just they closed down the streets and all that. And I remember I texted Thorgy, and I was like, "Hey, there's, <laughs> we'll go do a photo shoot in the snow." And she just had all this crap in her apartment and all these props, and she threw it on. So she, I guess, the vibe we were going for is uh, 
crazy cave woman raging down the streets of Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Uh, the next photo is, uh, you know, more recent. She ended up getting on Drag Race. I, I, I happened to be the one who did her audition tape that got her on the show. And, you know, we still, we're still good friends. And this photo was not too long ago. She had been texting me telling me like, oh, <laughs> I got a giant cookie in my apartment. We should do a shoot with it. And at first I thought it was, uh, you know, some fan that gave her a giant cookie and I would think to myself like man that, sh <laughs> that, uh, that cookie must be pretty stale and hard <laughs> by now but it was actually a giant styrofoam cookie which she found at a thrift store upstate and we did a shoot with it and that's that photo right there uh, next up is a photo of Sharon Needles uh, season 4 winner and this photo was taken the day before she was crowned the winner of that season and uh, I feel like just having footer worked with all these drag queens before uh, kind of helped me prep to work with Sharon which we ended up having an awesome friendship I, I did numerous photo shoots and music videos uh, for her but I remember this day it was a little intimidating yeah uh, I think she had just got in from a late night press run the night before and then she was doing the shoot with me and I, 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 I don't know if she had an event that night or the next day. For sure, I believe the next day was the crowning for season four. But yeah, we did the shoot. A friend of mine's uh, had access to an abandoned building behind his apartment. I gave him like fifty bucks, and uh, we did the shoot. We did the shoot there, you know. Uh, one, one, another, another shoot I did with Sharon that I really enjoyed and thought was pretty cool so she loves Amanda Lepore and she ended up having a song called I wish I were Amanda Lepore and Sharon told me oh well I have this vision that I want to be looking into a mirror and I see Amanda <laughs> and you know we, we we made that happen uh, a friend of mine George Ho uh, set designer helped me put this together and again it's one of those things of you know being clever and using what you got uh, it was we shot it at an apartment next to his that happened to be empty that he had the key to and we just went in there painted it and set it up and did the photo shoot <laughs> and then he painted it back he painted back the walls white uh but yeah it turned out to be a really cool photo as you see and uh next up is manila i just wanted to highlight manila because manila Luzon was the first drag race queen i shot i've had photographed and this was towards the end of season three I believe and uh, we just kind of kept in touch through the years uh, she lives in, in Los Angeles now and is always like just a lovely person to run into and uh, but this photo was shot in my apartment in New York I believe she was just in town and she asked if we, if we wanted to just shoot and I'm like yeah come on over next photo Alaska also shot at my apartment and Alaska I knew I, I ended up meeting through Sharon and uh, just worked out. She needed promos for her album, al album run, and she headed on over, and we took some photos. But yeah, this was for uh, her album for Pound Cake. Next up, Adore, another lovely soul, and uh, these are just sort of some fun stills we did uh, while we were filming a music video for her for ICU. Next photo is of Bianca Del Rio, and. Uh, <laughs> I remember when Bianca was, you know, especially um, working in New York at the, you know, events and stuff. I was terrified of her. Uh, I, I had a friend, um, not a friend, he was my, a friend slash roommate, uh, Matthew Camp. And he was, he, was, he had a go-go gig that he was, it was, it was a bingo night. And he was just the one spinning the balls. But Bianca was uh, the MC, And I was terrified of her. I mean, I, w I was in the back laughing at her making fun of other people but when i would see her kind of walk towards us you know just working the crowd like i would go in the opposite direction because i was terrified of being made fun of by her but fast forward this is uh the uh the crowning of season six we were in las vegas and we did some photos um before you know they f they crowned her and uh yeah I, I knew she was gonna win so that's why i really wanted to take some portraits of her and 
Speaking of another winner, Sasha Valor. Uh, really awesome. Uh, throughout the years in New York, they would always do like a live crowning, meaning the episode would run and they would announce the winner and then the winner would come down live and, or live to a New York audience and they would be given a crown and a scepter. So I did this for a couple of years. Like I, I had photos, uh, similar photos with uh, Violet, Violet Chachki, Bob the Drag Queen, and now um, Sasha Valor. And I believe this is like, again, a really awesome shot. I, when she got crowned, had the scepter, I asked her if she could turn around to do some quick photos and that's this photo. We just have a couple of fun drag con photos. Here's one. Uh, I usually love to get to the the convention center early, and uh, I was there early. And Rue was just kind of riding around with Michelle in a golf golf cart, <laughs> and that's this photo right there. Rue, Rue, room. And uh, my money shot every year at drag con is the ribbon cutting. At least I personally love uh, photographing the ribbon cutting. And uh, just a, a cool uh, shot of Rue DJing. Then you got Miss Vanjie on the pink carpet. Evie Oddly, just some looks. And then uh, Trixie Mattel, you know, uh, a Drag Race favorite. And uh, it's pretty awesome. She has a documentary called Moving Parts. And uh, towards the end, at, uh, they're doing shots of drag con and there's this pretty cool moment where she's riding, she's driving her, her little, I think it's a Barbie Jeep down that pink carpet and you can kind of see me uh, taking some photos of her. Here's, here's a different photo. It's not of her in the little Barbie Jeep car, but she's on a giant uh, lipstick rodeo situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, and that's drag con and drag queens. So next we have the Bjork photos. Uh, first one, uh, it was during the New York residency for Vonnie Coro album tour. And it's a photo I took at Carnegie Hall. And it was pretty, pretty cool because I sent them to James and they were thrilled with them. And from those set of photos is where you got the Vonnie Coro strings album cover. And I recall as a kid, it was so awesome because, you know, as a kid, I would, I, would, I would always walk into a record store and I would always think how cool would it be to like walk in and and see something you shot on the shelves, you know, and, and to see that manifest, it was pretty awesome. And James invited me back to shoot one of the other shows at City Center, and that's the next photo. And he asked, he had asked me to stick around and shoot the, 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 the last song because there was an, out, uh, an outfit change. And it was pretty cool. She rolled out in this giant floaty jellyfish moment. <laughs> and it was epic as always. And, uh, you know, they were thrilled with those photos. And it was, uh, summer came along and I had received an email from management. And they asked if I would be interested in being her photographer for Governor's Ball. And then you got this photo. And what's pretty awesome about Governor's Ball it's, I had stage access, and again, as a kid, I would th or I would see these concerts, and I would always think, I'm like, oh man, if I had stage access, you know, I would get these cool shots <laughs> um, of just the audience, and you know, having the musician, you know, up on the stage, and just giving that intimacy, uh, like you're there. So when I did Governor's Ball, I was out to get that shot, and uh, that's this photo, I feel. And the next photo is from the other side. And again, I, I just, it, it, it has this vibe, like you're like right there, you know? I, another favorite. And from these series of photos is where you got the Von Ikura live album cover. That's that right there. Uh, next photo was actually my first portrait of Bjork. And we were in Sydney at Cabbage Works for Bjork Digital, the first Bjork Digital. And it was uh, pretty cool. It was we took some photos before a Q and A. Next photo is uh, one we took for Bjork Digital in Tokyo, and Bjork was filming Quicksand. And uh, I think it's you know what I had learned from shooting parties and with like wild lighting and you know fogs and lasers. I sort of applied that when. You know, I was taking these photos because what I would do is I would watch the sound check 
and I kind of had an idea of the visuals already. So when time came, I believe it was two takes uh, Bjork did at the song for Quicksand. And, uh, but I was already ready. I already knew what was happening behind her and, um, you know, and what was gonna, throughout the song, I already knew the changes in the lighting. So I kind of knew, okay, cool, here I'm going to do a wide, here I'm going to do a close-up. And I, I know she goes all out at this part. So this photo, I already mentally knew what I wanted, and it looks pretty cool. Next photo is a portrait that we took in Montreal, Canada. And it was before her DJ set uh, during, the ex during the Bjork Digital Exhibition. And uh, it was cool. I mean, it was like a last-minute thing. Uh, <laughs> she... They, the flowers were from the dressing room and it just complemented the whole look and a quick snaps and uh, backstage and you know I believe it's one of her favorite portraits as well okay next photo um, it was Vonnie Crow Strings uh, tour we were at the Royal Albert in London and uh, what's great this photo you know when I took it I knew I had captured a really awesome photo because I, again, I was paying attention to the lighting, and I believe it was just a spotlight, and she was about to transition to a next song, so it was a really quick moment, and I didn't quite see the full image until I was going through them at the end of the night to send to press, and uh, yeah, I think it's like so gorgeous that even, um, I believe there was an exhibition at the venue at the Royal Albert, and they even asked me for a copy of the photo so they could hang in the walls for that exhibition. Next photo, uh, another stage moment. Uh, again, I love all these photos of Bjork just marching to the music on stage, you know, with musicians in the background. And it was at set the Ceremonia Festival, and here is an atmosphere shot. Again, going back to, you know, these club photos <laughs> of me playing with the lighting. And, you know, I knew these fireworks were going to happen. I knew this was this fire. I knew there was a lot happening. And, uh, but I already had my settings, my settings down, you know, in my brain. So, uh, you know, I ran to the soundboard and I got these shots. But again, I think shooting parties and all these parties, all these lasers and lights really kind of uh, helped me uh, be quick with these, with these kind of moments. Next photo, another fun visual. Uh, this was at FYF Festival in Los Angeles. And uh, <laughs> there's like maybe too many photos of similar to this one, but uh, I've always loved playing with the visuals of the songs uh, while she's performing. I thought this, this is for doing Wonderlust, and I kind of love how the entity is sort of creeping up behind her. Next photo, just a, a, a moment of James working backstage, um, probably giving... A little shush to Vibra's uh, masks or maybe working on something for Bjork. Uh, but it's, it's pretty cool seeing just James. I mean, he, he seriously is always working on something. Next photo was in Reykjavik and uh, Airwaves. And what's pretty, on top of it, looking like a jellyfish. <laughs> and it looking, looking awesome like a jellyfish. Uh, it was pretty cool because the, the photo was on the front page. Of the local newspaper in, in Reykjavik and and it was kind of just awesome seeing it you know all over the place all right next up is a pretty cool behind the scenes moment we were in Paris and uh, I believe they're kind of rare you know it gives you a little glimpse of just like getting her ready for stage man and it takes a village next photo uh, it's an, another uh, kind of shot that I kind of wanted to you know, reinvent because as a kid you would see it, like Rolling Stones or all these cool like concert magazines, and I, <laughs> I would always visualize. Oh, again, getting that photo with the audience, the sea of, of of fans, and that's what I tried to do here. I'd ask James if it were cool if during the last song, last couple of seconds, I would poke out and take some photos. And here you go. Next up, it's an intimate moment before Bjork goes on stage with James following hungry just doing a little making sure she's perfect <laughs> making sure she looks fabulous uh and then it's uh i did um uh, i thought this was a cute moment they had finished the show and they were just you know being rock stars and just a little bit of celebrating 
And I thought these were just kind of cute. Uh, I always thought it was kind of cool how James, Bjork, and Hungry would always walk together from, you know, backstage to the stage. And they would always keep her company. A glam moment with Hungry, just doing some shushes. Uh, we were in Rome during this photo. And last is a photo from the Utopia promos. And uh, it was really cool. I, you know, I believe we're going to test out just the, the visuals that Bjork was thinking for the album. And we're going to test out how the makeup translates in photos. And they ended up liking the photos. And, and next thing you know, there were the promos. And the next photo, uh, I was on a flight to Miami. She goes, Bjork, Bjork was uh, doing a DJ, DJ set there for Art Basel. And, you know, a friend of mine sends me a text telling me I have a billboard in London, you know, that was so amazing. Yeah.